That's what I thought too. And I was I was trying to come up with like different ideas that you could do as a helicopter pilot, but then I got lost. What type of jobs are they looking for? Well, anything flying. Anything and flying I mean, helicopter. if you fly a helicopter, you can, especially the stuff they've done. If you just go out and do news mm -hmm. stuff or yeah. news, traffic, the Seattle, tours. Maybe I'm not a helicopter pilot, so I don't know. Join the force and become a helicopter pilot. Those guys have been law enforcement yes. pilots. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Definitely. Yes, that is but true. But those guys get locked in for a long time. Like they're, they're those forever. positions don't open up very yeah. often, so though. The, yeah. they have, the guys they have now have been there forever. Yeah. And so it's kind of time for them to start looking. You know, yeah. to snatch up. Military. Yeah. Hmm. That's interesting. I didn't know. How long have your sisters been out? Uh, one just got out a couple months ago, and the other one was out two years ago, I think. Like who we got? Rick Seaman. Hey. Hi, Rick. Hey, you were Marines, right? The few, the proud. Yeah. Yes, Hoorah. sir. Hoorah. Yeah. And you know what Ronald Reagan said in 1985? What, what was that? He said, most people spend their whole lives wondering if they've ever really served the world properly. You know, have they contributed to the nation and the world in their lifetime? They worry about that. And then he went on to say, the U.S. Marines they don't have that problem. It's one of our most famous, uh, famous quotes about the Marine Corps. It was, I wonder, people wonder their entire lives if they made a difference. And Marines don't, they don't worry about that. They don't that. worry about that. Yeah. That's right. That's right. And um, it's a great quote from yeah. a great, great man, great yeah. human being. So. Rick, how do you remember that stuff? Well, when you get to be 60 plus, you become capable of these major memory miracles. You know? I was told it was the opposite. <laughs> I'd like to have that at 30 plus. <laughs> See, this, is, this is thinking back, going back, long term. But here's the trade off. If I'm home and I'm in the kitchen and I go, oh, I left my car keys in the bedroom. In the five seconds it takes me to walk to the bedroom, I don't remember why I went there. <laughs> so, so that's what you're looking at. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you remember to show up today. <laughs> Thank, <Yes>. you. Thank you. <laughs> okay, let's start the show. New day, new show, Veterans Nation. Yes, sir. Thank you, Rydell, 101st Army Airborne, part of our team. That's what we are. We're veterans honoring the past and marching towards the future. And we're here for all you vets out there and uh, all vets of all eras. Uh, this, this is our media. This is ours. Copy that. And if you're not a veteran but you just want to hear more about our stories and adventures, then this is the place. Or if you're tired and depressed by all the crap that's on TV, you can hang out with the vets because we get it done. Cool. <laughs> All right, well, today's show is going to be dedicated to the Navy's Sixth Fleet. They are maritime operations stationed out of Italy, and they conduct uh, missions throughout Europe and Africa. Been around a long time. Long time. Good stuff. Yeah. 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 Good outfit. Hey, Kelly, tell us what you know. All right, well, here's a recent uh, press release that came to us from the VA's national office in D.C. on retroprocessing of Agent Orange claims. It says that the new legislation now allows the VA to refocus 1,200 decision makers on claims backlog. The Department of Veterans Affairs announced that nearly 230 claims have already been processed regarding the three newest Agent Orange related conditions through June 2012, including over 150,000 claims required to be adjudicated under the order of the U.S. District Court for the Northern District of California in the Niemer versus U.S. Department of Veterans Affairs case. The near completion of these complex NEMR claims enabled the VA to redirect 1,200 employees who were dedicated to reviewing the Agent Orange cases. The Agent Orange claim stemmed from the VA's 2010 amendment of its regulations to add the ischemic heart disease, hairy cell and other chronic B-cell leukemias, and Parkinson's disease to the list of diseases presumed to be related to exposure to the herbicide that was used in Southeast Asia. In addition to redirecting its rating staff, the VA has developed a comprehensive transformation plan to achieve VA Secretary Shinseki's goal of completing the claims within 125 days at 98% accuracy by 2015. Well, thanks, Kelly. I suppose we can call that good news? Well, time will tell. And Vietnam vets out there, uh, let us know how things go for you. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, and you can email us with your thoughts and experiences uh, with the VA on this issue or any other VA issue you might be having. Uh, we actually have resources at the VA and in the House and Senate Committee uh, for Veterans Affairs. Yes, we do. 
Would that be like moles or spies? <laughs> Rick's trying to get us all in trouble. <laughs> but seriously, our sources are all legit and transparent. Thank you, Mike. Thank you. Thank you for keeping me out of trouble. I don't, <laughs> I, I don't want to uh, get us to where Congress is going to reinstate the draft. You know? <laughs> well, uh, speaking of emails, uh, Natasha just handed me this email from the son of a World War II vet seeking some advice. Uh, it reads as follows. My dad's military records were lost in a fire. I want to know where or what to do next. He was injured in World War II, and I want to see if he was entitled to a Purple Heart. Can you direct me on what to do? Well, why don't we take a quick break for one of our short and useful vet PSAs, and we'll come back with some answers for this gentleman. Veterans Nation, we'll be right back. For over 100 years, the battle cry of the VFW has always been the same. America needs to do more for veterans. From combat to Capitol Hill, the VFW marches on with health care, jobs, benefits, and justice. VFW.org is the first stop you should make on your way home. The VFW. No one does more for veterans. Okay, we're back. And uh, we got some info for that email, Trevor. Well, uh, the fire I think he's referring to was in 1973 at the National Personnel Records Center in St. Louis, Missouri. It destroyed between 16 and 18 million World War II and Korean War vets' records, uh, as well as others who had post-war service. Now, it was not only a huge fire, but the massive gallonage of water used to put it out also caused additional damage. Um, what records survived depends on the veteran's name alphabetically and his date, dates of service. Today, a World War II veteran or Korean War veteran can contact the NPRC in St. Louis for guidance. Um, there is some chance that certain World War II veterans may learn that the records may have survived. There are also forms online that can be used to apply for this info. Here is the NPRC's official listing of records known to have been destroyed. For the Army, personnel discharged November 1, 1912 to 1960, 80% destroyed. For the Air Force, personnel discharged September 25, 1947 to January 1, 1964, with the names alphabetically after Hubbard, James E., 75% destroyed. We've uh, also got some good contact info up here on the screen that's, uh, that's useful. Yeah, that's right. Uh, the telephone number that you can reach out to is 314-801-0800. Uh, you can email them at mpr, as in Mike Paparomeo, dot center at n-a-r-a dot g-o-v. Uh, you can also check the status by emailing them at mpr.status at nara.gov. And if you want to fax them, it's 314-801-9195. Again, that's in St. Louis. Well, the most important item that a veteran needs to get is their DD-214, which is the papers that are issued to them upon their discharge from the military. With that form, the veteran can get access to any benefits or benefit information. All efforts to find your DD-14 need to be made. Attics, closets, basements, shoes, Sometimes where the Easter Bunny might hide it. Right. Sometimes the best children or relatives might end up with it. And That's they'll true. stash it away in a box somewhere, not really knowing what it is. Mm -hmm. Don't forget about the ex-wives. Yeah. <laughs> Ex-husbands. <laughs> well, there you go. Yeah, it should also be noted that uh, many veterans that returned from World War II, uh, they submitted their DD-214 discharge papers to employers or to their local city, uh, county, or state governments for filing, and these possibilities should also be considered. And of course, any World War II or Korean vet who has been in or is currently in the VA system would have no problem accessing their records as they remain on file. All right, and this is just one example of how important it is for all veterans to get in the VA system. You know, call them, get that free medical exam. You're entitled to a bond discharge. Get your ID card, get your name in the system. And vets, if you guys have any questions at all about the VA or uh, benefit questions, just anything, uh, shoot us an email at info at veteransnetwork.org and um, we'll take it on. And if we don't have the answer, uh, we can contact our VA specialist, Dave Colmer and put him on the hotline and get it answered for you. Dave Colmer is the book. Dave Colmer <laughs> is the book, yeah. Uh, 22 years as a VA service rep. Down there on the hotline answering questions and uh, getting guys taken care of. He was a, he was a Marine Hurrah. for 20 years, Vietnam, 63, 66. Uh, 
and now he's a service officer uh, currently with the American Legion. A great vet, doing great things yeah. for the veteran yeah. community. Yeah. A lot of dedication. Glad we got him on the team. Glad we got Definitely. him on the team. Definitely. Yeah, glad he's on our side. And uh, look, thanks, Rick. Thank you very much. Listen, vets, we'll see you all tomorrow. Welcome home. Welcome home. And we're out.